Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at CodePen and loading sprites onto CodePen as well. So this is CodePen.io. Yeah, let's undo the F11 there. Uh, one second, my F11, my other screen, F11. Okay, so we're at CodePen.io and we're on Dan Zen, and we're going to imagine that we want to bring in some files here, some images and some sprite data and that kind of stuff uh, from somewhere else and have them work in CodePen. So let's see what those might be. We'll go back to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. We'll look under examples here. Now all these examples are out on the Zim server, so you'd have to bring in information into CodePen, whereas these examples are on CodePen, so you could just fork it there, and we'll show you forking later. And then underneath the CodePens are some more Zim examples here, and of course there's many Zim examples out in the world as well. So let's uh, take a look at a sprite now. Here's a sprite, the space guy. Ooh, and he walks around like that, and he can shoot. Now, just be careful, this sprite was made by Antonio. His name just popped up there. Hang on, let me take off the sound. This sprite is made by Antonio. His name is up there, so don't just go using this in some project. Uh, you can probably use it for educational or just to test things out. Uh, so, you know, be respectful of code. Uh, it's also a complicated example. There are two pages, so we're going to click this thing right here, or swipe, indeed, swiping works, and we can explode an asteroid, and all this has sound, and then we'll swipe again, and we'll come back here to our, our first page. So there's a lot going on. Let's go take a look at the source. You can go control U, so that's one way to grab the source, or you can click, right click, not the image, but right click off this off the stage if you right click off the stage you can view the the source that way as well now one of the things to watch out for is this code is from zim 4.7.3 so that's ages ago that's twice the life of zim ago we do things a lot differently now i mean all this stuff probably still works but it's just done in an old way for instance zim.frame is here we don't need to put the namespace in front and there's going to be a dozen uh, different things in here. Now, if you want to keep up on new things in Zim, here's where we can do that. Uh, even the bits. The bits are 9. We're on version 10, so the bits have 64. We try and keep that up to date, but, you know, and, uh, there's, there's 64 of them there, and they're not too bad. Okay, so they're not too bad. The later examples in general are not too bad. The Zim intro should be up to date, so you can look at the Zim intro for examples. But where we do this for real is down here in the tips. So the tips are the latest way that we're working. So here we, and they're nice and small. Look, there we are talking about the namespace. We used to do it this way, now we do it this way. So you should come in, and if you're just starting Zim and you're looking at old Zim examples, don't just copy a bunch of old Zim examples into CodePen. That's using old code, and it's uh, not good. <laughs> so uh, there's information on chaining, configuration objects, etc. We're going to bring in images, so look under images here. This shows you some tips on images. We'll just click that, and there's this security error that we have to deal with and stuff um, if you're viewing them locally. Now, viewing them on CodePen, we won't run into that, but we actually do have a cores issue as well. So we'll come back to this one, and we leave the tips uh, sitting there like that. Let's head on back to our code. So this was the code for the sprite that we want. And uh, we, can't, we can't even see the images in here. They're not in here because, uh, like I said, it's a complicated example. Uh, we have pages. There's a pages object here on the first page that handles two different pages. Each of those pages happen to be in a different scene JS here. Now, you don't have to split it up this way, but you can. So if we go into scene one, here's the code, and here's the old code that loads with the frame.assets. Now, it may be that if you're actually loading, um, loading images for two different scenes, that you don't want to load the second scene's images first. 
and it may be that you still want to use the frame.load assets which allows you to load assets at any time especially later if you didn't want to load those assets at the start then we need another event a complete event but what happened a little while back in Zim I can't remember which one maybe Zim 6 or something like that we said hey you know we, we've been working for a long time. We load the frame, then we load the assets. So we load the frame, we get an event saying the frame's ready, then we load the assets, we get an event saying the assets are ready. And that was a bit of a pain to work with that double event all the time, especially if we're trying to teach kids. Like events are hard enough without running two of them in a row or inside one another. So what we did is we made it so that we can load these assets from the frame call itself. And you would find that in the tips. Uh, tips back here. Here are the tips. This is talking images. You can load them in the frame. So right up here is how to load the images in the frame right there. So we want to do it that way. Okay, um, back to the code. However, it is this image right here, the sprite.png that we want. If we're running a sprite, there are two ways to, to handle sprites. One way is sprites that don't need any data because their rectangles for the frames are the same size. And then we can just say, oh, it has three columns and two rows, go, sprite, done. But if the, sprite, if the uh, rectangles are different sizes for the frames, then we need to load sprite sheet um, data. So this is a JSON file that comes from Texture Packer. Both these things do, and we'll see that as more visually as, as we look at these. So uh, let's grab them. Now, that's the URL or the file name for the PNG, but the full URL has this path added to it, and even this is uh, relative to the, the main file. So I'm going to grab the assets right here. We go up to where the sprite sheet is. It's in a Zide directory. That's the name of this guy. And we paste the assets on it. Now, uh, we can't quite get there yet because we need the rest of it, and that would be the sprite sheet.png. So we copy that, we come back here and paste the rest of it on there, and we hit enter. This now is the path to that sprite sheet. Do you feel like you're hacking? <laughs> now, remember, this is somebody else's content, right? So we have to be careful here. Uh, we right click and we say save image as. And we'll save it just on the desktop like that. So sprite sheet.png, save for now on the desktop. We come back to the code, and then we also want to get the JSON file right here. So we paste the JSON file onto the end of that, and we hit enter. And there's Firefox showing JSON data. So can we copy this? Right click, save page as, save page as. And we'll save it on the desktop as spritesheet.json. Great. Now we'll go back into CodePen right here. You know, uh, CodePen is great for front-end developers. So if you do any creative coding, even if you're just working in, in HTML and CSS, it's, it's primarily uh, that. But it, there's also lots of Canvas work there. And Zim's got all sorts of stuff there as well, as we'll see. Uh, but you should sign up for CodePen. It's free and maybe even become a professional. A professional gets to make little screenshots, um, uh, thumbnail sort of things of, of what they make here. So these types of things. And they also support CodePen and there's uh, a few other that can make private pens and stuff like that. So we need to handle assets. Now you could try and point to the assets with the, that URL that I gave you, but there's this thing called cross-origin blah 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 cores it's called and it's really just a pain in the neck but it means that you can't load in images from other people's sites in onto the canvas unless there's permission given to do that and it helps with security and it helps with pri and not privacy but you know just uh, not copying other people's stuff. So the other site may allow that, and you can allow cores cross origin um, by setting uh, a config XML or an XML file in a, in a directory that has all the images or whatever the content is, videos, etc. Or you can um, set the HT access there, etc. But that's sort of beyond the scope of this video. We are just going to load the images into CodePen, so we won't have that difficulty because our image is on CodePen and our stuff is on CodePen. So to do that, you click the little guy up here, 
and choose uh, Asset Manager. So I'm clicking on Asset Manager, and oops, I wanted to sort of hang on, uh, load that up in another window. Uh, click that, right click, and Asset Manager, and open up in a new tab. I like that. So now we've got the Asset Manager coming in. There it is. And this allows us to upload images. So I'm going to hit Browse like that, or I could go find it and just drop it on there. But I think they're called Sprite Sheet JSON. So we'll bring in the Sprite Sheet JSON. Great. And there it is right there. So here's the Sprite Sheet JSON. It's very small. Sprite Sheet JSON. And then I'm going to click Browse and grab the boop, Sprite Sheet.png where we'll see the Sprite Sheet for the first time. And there it is. Okay, so that's what the Sprite Sheet looks like. You can see that the rectangles that hold these are different sizes. For instance, it's packed in there. So the rectangle around this Sprite is perfectly around the Sprite. And then the next one comes. And the skinny ones here have less room. So that means we couldn't just say this has so many columns and so many rows. It would get it mixed up. It wouldn't be able to... To, they're not evenly spaced. So we need to use the data that tells us how big these rectangles are. Now, that was all done in Texture Packer, Texture Packer, or there's other programs probably. But Texture Packer is free for the first five or ten sprites that you make, and then you can pay whatever it is, 49 bucks, 50 bucks. And remember, that's if this is your career, if you're making sprites, I did it, I, I, I purchased that. You know, you've got to support these people. Um, it's it's really only a cost of a few meals out, and uh, that allows them to maybe get a few meals out themselves, <laughs> deservedly. All right, so we are bringing in uh, the sprite here, and uh, that's great. Now here's the URL right here, so we'll copy that. Copy. So that's the URL on well, it's on Amazon, I guess, which is CodePen's using to host their stuff. I'm sure they've turned on their, their sharing. So they've got their cores on Amazon set up so that CodePen can use that. We, we have to do that too. We, we held our things on Amazon for quite some time, still do hold our site things. And we set up the core sharing on Amazon so that the Zim site can use those. All right, back into CodePen then. Now we could, uh, or what, what you could try and do is, well, we need to create a new pen is, is what we need to do. Um, you can start from scratch or you can start from a template. It's probably best to start from the Zim template. We have one. Uh, this is the Danzen CodePen account. We have a Zim template that is a, a, a copy or a fork of the, uh, the Zim CodePen template. But let me show you where you can find the Zim CodePen template. Click on Topics right here. This is one place. Topics, and there's Zim right here is a topic, and click that, and there it is, the code pen, the Zim code pen template. The first page is the intro page, is an intro to Zim that shows a bunch of stuff there. You're welcome to look at that, of course. Here you can say a new pen from template, that would work, or if you happen to find the template some other way, now we're on the Zim uh, code pen page here. And this is the code pen template. And there it is. That's the code pen template. And we can say fork. Uh, maybe just before we do that, let me explain something as well. That it doesn't look like the code pen template. Normally, the screenshots are, are screenshots of what you're seeing here. So there's a bunch of examples. And you can go next, next, next through a, maybe 30 of these things. Um, so those are all the basic types of uh, beginnings that you might try and do. Then there's also all of the featured Zim pens, another 50 or maybe 100, I can't remember. There's a lot of featured Zim pens as well, which show uh, the various things that we've made. Normally, that would just be a blank template right here, but we, we ran with that for a little bit, but <laughs> especially before we added this thing. We added this thing as well afterwards. Before we added that thing, the very first thing you saw here was just almost like a blank screen, or it looked like this, but without the circle. <laughs> it's like, eh, you know, so what we did, what we could do, because we, we helped CodePen out by paying for a subscription. That's 60 bucks a year, I think. We um, can make our own screenshot. So we made a bit of a nicer screenshot looking there. But okay, so we're going to go into this template. 
as we did before. See, this is what it would have looked like <laughs> if we didn't have that ability. And then we can say fork. So right there, I'm going to hit fork like that. And now Dan Zen will have a version of the Zim code pen template here. Right, at which point you could turn it into a template yourself and start having your start from here. One thing to do though, remember to do is to keep up to date. Uh, as we progress with Zim, this template will become old. So don't leave it, don't leave the name of your code pen pen Zim code pen template. That's awful. So we'll call this Zim Sprite, for instance. And uh, there it is. Now let's talk about uh, let's talk about how code pen works. First of all, note there's nothing in the HTML. Now you could go out to that example or perhaps a simpler example, come in, copy all of that, copy all that stuff, come in and paste it into the HTML. And that would actually work. That's how we did it before we knew what was going on with CodePen. But then we figured it out. Okay, so uh, how CodePen works is it's got settings here where you can import various things. So let's let's see how we did that. Because uh, if you take a look, no HTML here, no CSS here, and inside here we don't even have a full template. Take a look, there is only the frame call and, and that. So where'd the rest of this stuff go? <laughs> Where's the call to the Zim library and the CreateJS library, etc.? This seems so simple. Uh, and that's great because this is what people see on CodePen. Remember, CodePen is social. So other people come in and look at your code. They don't necessarily want to see all the, the templates set up. They, maybe they do, maybe they don't. They want to get right to it. So there's our code right here, and we're ready to go. Now, under settings here, under HTML or CSS, uh, we've got nothing, nothing. And then under JS, here's where it kind of happens for us. There's where we're calling in CreateJS. Here's where we're calling in Zim.js, and those two are the latest versions, so that's nice. You can go off and see them by clicking here or remove them. You can add more resources. We are also bringing in that icon down in the bottom right-hand corner, which you don't need. You can just hit the X on that if you want. The other thing we've done is set this to be Babel right here, the processor, and that's because things like Internet Explorer 10 can't read ES6. So uh, that's 10% of the audience out there, by the way. However, I think, <laughs> you know, oddly, CodePen has stopped e uh, Internet Explorer 10 from, or 11, or whatever it is, from coming in here. It might be 11 that I was, should have said there. Um, stop them from coming in anyway. However, you should be aware of that, that there's a large population out there that can't see ES6, so you should always run your ES6 through Babel or something like that, which transpiles it. No, not transpiles it, pre-processes. Pre All right, so, uh, great. Now, how do you know which ones are the latest to put there? This is kind of like a, a larger overview, isn't it? Um, Hang on, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention here as well while we're in here is under the behavior, we've set, this is important, it's a pain in the neck to work with CodePen if you don't fix it up to how you like it. It will automatically save after a while and that's fine, but we've turned off the auto preview. Auto preview is just annoying. You're typing things and it's it's trying to, it, it saves it and shows you what you're typing as you go and it's just like, wait a minute, I'm not finished typing yet, and it's showing me an error, but I'm not finished typing, that kind of thing. So I turn that off. Not only that, it's it's loading this, the CDN call to, to, our, to the stuff constantly, just over and over again, which is fouling up reports and, and you know, just creating a load when you don't need load. Uh, so that's one thing. Also, I wouldn't format. Just just do your own formatting. You're welcome to do that at the end if you want. Well, I mean, you should always keep your formatting as you go. So uh, perhaps you want to keep that on, but I just find it gets in the way, especially when you're chaining and indenting on chaining. So there we go. We'll close that down. Uh, how do we find the latest code to put in there? Well, that's pretty easy to do. We'll go back to Zim. Oops, we're going to leave this one. We'll find... Uh, 
goodness gracious. We can come back to it, though. Um, the latest code is at the top of the docs. So there it is, 10.9, or in the CDN. So here's the latest code in the CDN. CreateJS is in there as well. CreateJS is right here. So that's the things that Zim works with. So you can grab it uh, from there. Most people go in and... Um, uh, most people go in and hit the code section right here where the latest template is. And you can just hit copy from the latest template or get the minimal version. So there's the create JS and the Zim for you if you want from there. And this is how you would work outside CodePen. You would use this stuff. So back into CodePen though. Right, we talked about settings. We've uh, got that. Did, have we? We've made our made our stuff, our uh, our assets. Did we copy that URL? Do we still have the copy? Let's go take a look. We paste here. Oh, we do. What do you know? See, if I cut pasted that in, it would try and save it and then give me an error. It's just like arg. So I, I find that kind of frustrating. So let's settle down and actually do some code then, shall we? Ooh, this is what you've been waiting for. I don't usually do code in in or uh, screen captures in code pen because sometimes it's a little cramped in here. All right, so we want uh, const assets. Now I always call it assets so that you're consistent. And the asset we want, if we want, we could put that whole thing in there. But later when we go to use the asset, we would have to use this whole thing. So instead, we have a system where we copy that and paste it into there. So that will be our asset name. Now you can actually pass in uh, squiggly brackets here if you wanted to with uh, something that says the source, SRC, is this. And then the ID is even something shorter like space guy. Just leave it space like that. Then you could say asset space. But I find that this amount of work is is more work than just adding the PNG onto it. So I, I don't do it that way. Now the other thing is this is one asset. We actually want two assets. And when you have two assets, you would then put that into an array and we would talk about our other asset. Our other assets, almost the same, but it's a .json right there. So there we are bringing in the JSON data as well. That's also an asset and we bring it in through the same way. You can bring in fonts this way as well and sounds all together. <clears throat> now, aside from that, we also need the path. Const path is equal to this gnarly stuff here at the beginning. Blah, right up to the slash as a string. So this is the path, and we don't need that anymore. All right. Good. Now, all that did was put an array into a variable and a path into a variable. It does not help Zim out at all. What will help Zim out is passing those into the frame. So that you have to remember to do that. So assets and the path right there. Now you might think, well, hang on, the path comes before the assets. Why didn't you switch that around? Uh, remember, you can pass in just an asset. So this could be just one asset and then down below, or like an array of assets, down below we, we can use them right away. We don't need a path. So the path is more optional than the assets. However, we usually do add the path to the end. And now down in here, where it says code here, we go asset. And now in the past, that used to have to be framed on asset, but we did it so much, we decided to simplify it a bit with a global asset function in Zim, which accesses the frame.access for, or frame dot, uh, asset for you. And this one was called, usually if you want to make sure you don't make an error, you copy this. So we copy that and stick it right here. Boop. All right. And we can then, that's that now is a bitmap asset. We can then say something like center it on the stage and dot drag, for instance, like so. We save that up and we run it with the big run button. And there's our asset. Now it's not it's not exactly the sprite we were hoping for, but it's a good first step. We've brought in the image. Now what would happen if we made a mistake? Say when you went to make your path, you forgot and you did something like this. 
you accidentally left all that on there, that means the path is going to be broken. So we save this and we run it. And here's what you get. You get the Zim broken image icon. <laughs> Draggable. <laughs> Nice. So if you see that, there's something wrong with your path setup. It might be, I wonder what we see if we don't pass in anything there, even if we had the right path. Let's see what Zim comes up with. We run this. A broken image icon because this doesn't exist. It's a broken image. We have not passed in this information right here to be able to get that. So the assets and the path go right there. Now in outer Zim templates we usually put these up as variables as well. So you'll see a stack of variables at the top. Uh, in the code pen example we just drop those directly right into here. Uh, it doesn't really matter though. All right, so there's your asset and your path. The next parameter is the waiter. So we could pass in a new waiter there and if it takes a long time for the and you can specify what color that waiter is please do that otherwise it's orange you know you're loading something and you've got this orange waiter and i know right away oh that's a zim waiter and they didn't customize it i also like my stuff without corners these days you can specify the corner and a few other things anyway you could also pass in a progress bar there so new progress bar if you've got a lot of loading and want to actually see the progress but what you can't do is a custom progress bar or a custom loading page in this case. For that, you couldn't, you don't load your assets in the frame. Instead, you load your assets in a load assets down here, and then you can do anything you want. As the frame is loaded, you can put a message in there, or custom, custom loading and stuff, and run the frame.load assets. Okay. So with this system, it's faster. It's great. You've got, you can pass in a waiter if you need to, or a progress bar. Uh, but if you really need to customize that, you've got the option to do separate loading with a separate event. And you've got two different events, a complete event, and you can also get an event for each thing that's loaded. So you could use that for your progress bar, whether that's a martini glass filling up or a forest fire being put out or whatever, you know, one of those things. <laughs> Sometimes people spend more time on their, on their loading bar than they do on their app. All right, anyway, uh, we're, we're back to proper here, uh, save and run. And that's that's our, our asset in there, great. So hopefully that helps bring in the asset. Now let's talk about a sprite. So for the sprite, we would make a new sprite, like so. Is that big enough for you? <laughs> uh. Ah, I went too big because I, I just went into some mobile view, so nothing like a responsive view. Huh? So new sprite, and we could load in the image here if we were loading in an image and then specifying rows and calls or calls and rows. Uh, but as you can see, this image is not equal, so we're not doing it that way. And by the way, uh, if you're to do that, make sure if your sprite sheet doesn't have an even number or however you want to call it a full rows and calls and maybe the last row has only three things on it rather than ten things on it then you can also pass in a num or a count I can't remember maybe it's a count so that will be how many in total there are and then Zim will figure it out in your sprite sheet otherwise you'll get this skipping at the end that doesn't look very good okay but if it's an even number like hey all the calls and rows add up then you don't need to worry about that number Anyway, we're not loading in a sprite sheet that is like that. We're loading in a sprite sheet with data. So uh, what we decided to do is rather, if you, if you take a look at the asset manager here for the, uh, just be careful here. <laughs> what the heck, where am I? Uh, just be careful here. There's the, the sprite sheet and it's under images. The JSON file actually loaded under other so if I click in other, I can come back and see, uh, got double scroll bar, come back and see, what was it called? Space guy dot uh, JSON. Did we load in the JSON? I scroll down. There it is. Sorry. Sprite sheet dot JSON. So here's the sprite sheet dot JSON. Look at the data is there to show you where the image is. That, that's automatically done. Actually, it might not be automatically done in Texture Packer. I think they put in some bad-looking URL here for the image, like um, 
whatever the file was or well anywhere something that you have to watch out for so we may have modified that after basically this is a relative URL that just means as long as our JSON data and the image is in the same folder then the JSON data will be able to find the image for us so we used to have a couple step process here where when we loaded in the sprite we had to load in the image and the JSON data now we've simplified that to loading in just the JSON data so we'll zoom in on this if we can and it looks like this now the JSON data is the whatever the seventh parameter or whatever the fifth parameter of the sprite so we're immediately going to our Zim Duo technique here and saying JSON colon now we do not put the uh, the JSON file name. So we don't come in here and go like that. All right. Well, we thought, okay, we could simplify it and let you do that. But no, that's not how you access an asset. You access an asset by using the asset command right here. So we decided to keep it simple and or keep it consistent and say, no, we're accessing an asset. So that means we need asset round bracket sprite sheet .json. okay so don't forget that again could have made it simple or simpler but just decided that that isn't proper we're accessing an asset here and we've left it like that so that is accessing your sprite we'll dot center that and if we want we can make it so it dot drags too although we probably animate it uh, which is animating it, by the way, is different than running it, as, as we're about to see. So now, well, speaking of running, we run this, and there's our sprite. So this is actually fairly miraculous. Uh, let's see our sprite run before we claim full miraculousness. <laughs> okay, so a run is a dot run the sprite, and we give it a time. I think the default time is a thousand or a thousand milliseconds or one second. So we save this up and we run it. And there is our sprite running. Now it only runs once and it took one second to run that. But still, that is miraculous. Let's review. We list the, uh, the data that we need or the, the assets. We list the path. We pass those into the frame. We make a new sprite and we say, hey, please get the data from the JSON file and run it. <laughs> Great. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, possibly it could be simpler if we could have just put the asset right in here. But because of the preloading system with the canvas, that has been simplified from, you know, five lines of, of stuff like load queues and IDs and, and create JS. That's how it is, the, the, the preload JS. Uh, and after a year or two of using that, we said, hey, like, I don't want to do these five lines. I'm trying to teach this stuff. I don't want to do these five lines every time. So in Zim, we wrapped that up and simplified it to what you see here. Um, that's great. In the past, this it was 10 times as much, and you would just never, you would never be able to run a sprite first time in Flash, for instance. It was just, oh, it was like a headache. Same with like loading 3D models. You just never, never can get them to work the first time. <laughs> 20 years, 30 years in this business, it's just, it just isn't done. Um, loading in custom fonts as well. Like, but here we can do it. We can, we've got it. We just ran a sprite. You saw that. Now we want to loop that. So loop, uh, we can do everything or pretty well everything that we do in Zim Animate. All the power of Zim Animate which is, you know, tucked in behind that is all the power of CreateJS Animate, but, uh, and more, we can run the sprite using all that stuff. So that's pretty amazing. So we'll, we'll drop into the Zim Duo technique here. If I can get rid of my, uh, if we can type, <laughs> goodness gracious, let's try that again. I don't know how that happened. Somehow I, uh, I've got left with just quotes there. Okay, so squiggly brackets, and then we say, um, uh, time this is the time and if we want to loop it we go loop colon true like so so let's have a look at this looping now 
<laughs> Quick shooter, huh? <laughs> walk, walk, walk. Shoot. It's approaching its target. Push, push, push. So what's with this? Why isn't it just walking? Why, why, why is it sh walking and shooting? This is the full sprite, but we've divided up our sprite into different animations. So uh, those are frames. We can run here. Uh, added to Zim, the, the run uh, of the sprite are things like, I don't know, start frame or something. So if we want to start on a certain frame, we could put it in there, start frame zero, uh, end frame um, seven or whatever. And that we could do the cycle that way. However, we've already divided up the sprite data into these cycles for us. So let's go take a look at that sprite data. It's a little hard to see here, so we'll see if we can copy this. I'll copy that and bring it back into here. There's probably a way that we can set up a wrap. I think setting up the wrap on your editor is not done through... Oh yeah, it's done, done through this and then settings, I think, and not the settings here. So you have to set up your main settings. I won't bother. Okay, so there's our... This is the, the JSON data right here. There's our image. Here's all those frames. And, and those are the uh, dimensions of the frames, I guess, the starting positions and the widths and heights. And then here are the animations. So the animations, one is called stop, and that happens to be frame five. And here is walk, and walk is from zero to 16. That's our walk cycle. Here's our shoot cycle, 17 to 24. And then here's a mix just to demonstrate the power of this kind of thing, if you so desire. It says, start off with frames, and I want you to play frame one, then seven, then seven, then two, then one. <laughs> so basically anything you want. Then I want you, the next thing after this would be the walk cycle. So that would run the walk cycle next. And it runs all that at a speed of one. So we're overriding the speed and so forth. You can just carry on doing these things. Cool, huh? So that piggybacks on CreateJS Power, except I think we did a, a slight modification of that. So you can read about in that in the sprite, all the formats for more complex animations uh, arrangements from your sprite. But we just want the walk cycle. So let's comment this one out right here. And that's called a label. So we go comma, label, colon, walk. Quote, walk, like that. We save that up and we run it. Oh, it's walking slower though now, but sure enough, there's the walk cycle. Let's speed it up a bit. Why is my time even in quotes? Uh, time shouldn't be quotes, that's relative. Is it relative time? I don't think we do relative time. So it did figure it out. That's great, but we don't need that. We can set it to 500 and hit run. There. Great, huh? So have we got everything? Here's, here's a sprite that's running. And now that's a drag, but drag by default will shut down animation on the thing unless you say uh, allow tweens or something like that colon true Let's save that it's not often well it's not often that you drag a running sprite oh that wasn't it um allow tween okay let's see what that would be we'll pop on back to the zim docs for us we'll find this so here's zim and docs and uh drag so remove tweens <laughs> okay and my apologies Remove tweens, false, like that, and run it here like that. Often we animate a sprite. So there we go. Now we're dragging like that. Um, often we animate a sprite, and that is just dot animate, like so. And in here we would put um, something like uh, uh, props, colon. If we wanted the X, we could animate the X. Ooh, let's animate it 200 relative. That's a relative animation of an X in a time of, well, one millisecond is fine. Okay, and then we run it. There it goes. You see that? It just 
animated that. If you wanted it to pause after that, you can easily pause a, 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 on the call. You would say call and run a function, a, a function or an arrow function we've been using, I guess. An arrow function there. Whoop. So if after that one second we wanted to pause the sprite, we would say the sprite. We don't have a name for it right now. We could pause all animation, but uh, var, oops, const mm, sprite with a lowercase is equal to that. Then we would say sprite dot pause animate. So we use the pause animate. It's really it piggybacks on animate. So the run just sends an animate through. So everything you can do with animate, you can do with the um, with a run. So there we go. Boop. It stopped walking after that. If you wanted it to fire, you could probably at this point uh, run the something like this. We'll copy here. Um, so we are not pausing. We are dot running in a certain amount of time. How about in three milliseconds? We're going to loop. If we want to loop count, loop count colon two. Well, make, may as well make it three. A loop count of three, and the label will be, what was it, shoot, like that. So we're going to run. It might need a shorter time. I'm not sure how long we need, but you can set that up. So now we're going to call uh, the sprite running uh, like so at the end. I'm not sure if we have to get rid of the walk cycle run. I think it cancels it. Nice, huh? So let's try it again. Choop, choop, choop. And then we could make this go back the other way or whatever it may be. So that's a little bit of an exploration of the sprites. Do you like it? I mean, uh, that's that's not too bad, is it? Um, this has been a what's a but or no, not a what's bubbling. <laughs> the, I've just said it. This uh, is been the Zim Explorer on Code Pen and Sprites. Hopefully you find that that helpful. I am Dr. Abstract. Come on in, join us, zimjs.com or zimjs.com slash slack, and you can talk to us there. Now just remember that um, if you're using code that's already been done, you should credit that or just be careful with that. All the best. Ciao.